request public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. All right, uh, our, our first item is the adoption of our agenda. Do I hear any edits or revisions from the commission? Uh, then hearing none, uh, we will adopt the agenda as presented. Uh, item number two, we would like to welcome Michael Banish, if I'm saying that right, to our commission. Uh, Michael, if you take a minute just to kind of introduce yourself to us and then we'll uh, reciprocate back to you. Hi everyone, um, you pronounced my name correctly, so way to go. Um, I'm Michael Banish. Um, I grew up in San Rafael and spent about a decade away for college and um, living in San Francisco and Greenbrae. And um, my wife and I uh, bought our first home um, in Lucas Valley Estates earlier this year. So I'm excited to once again be a San Rafael resident. Um, and I'm really just excited to, you know, get more involved in the community. Um, I'm really passionate about our parks and open space. And I uh, work at the Ocean Room JCC, so I'm familiar with the whole recreation world. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you all um, and the staff to, you know, help make our community uh, even stronger. So nice to meet you all. Thanks for um, having me. All right. Thank you. Um, I guess I can start. Uh... Again, my name is John Toon. I've been a Marinwood resident for over 30 years. I've probably been on the commission for, I guess, maybe seven years. I'm retired. My work history was in the public works. Uh, I retired as the park superintendent, uh, city arborist for the city of San Rafael. Um, Ann? Uh, my name is Ann Shawson. And um, I've been in the neighborhood in Lucas Valley for a couple of years now. Um, but like you, Michael, I, I grew up in Marin and then I kind of went away to college, lived in San Francisco for a while and I came back to raise my kids here. So, uh, I enjoy being part of the commission as a parent in the neighborhood and someone who loves our open space too. And thank you. And Ian? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Um, great. Um, yeah, my name's Ian. I, um, I grew up in Marinwood, um, and after a number of years away, came back with my family um, a few years ago. I've been on the commission for a year, and just echoing everyone else as a parent and community member, and a you know frequent user and um, appreciator of the open space and the um, recreation facilities and programming. And so, um, glad to be on the commission, and glad to have you join us, Michael. Thanks. And then uh, Lisa is our liaison from the board of directors. I guess you can say something. <laughs> nice to meet you, Michael. I'm Lisa Ruggieri. Um, I'm the board liaison for Park and Rec Commission. Um, similar to you, I, um, I also grew up in the area. I grew up in Nevada, um, went away for college, um, and then also now live in Lucas Valley Estates, so we're neighbors um, of uh, two young kids now that we're raising here, and it's just a wonderful community. Um, and this commission is, is an, an excellent one, so um, it's, a, it's a good one. We're glad that you're here. I'm glad to meet you. Glad to be here. And then, uh, I guess Eric is our district manager. You guys have probably already met each other, I guess. But yeah, we did. Uh, Michael actually came down on Friday morning uh, and spent, I don't know, probably about an hour with me. And we did a brief little tour, mostly of the nearby area here, um, park and the pool and the playgrounds and the community center. And he has also uh, a little sneak peek at the maintenance facility as it's uh, in process of being constructed. Uh, just to play along, uh, I actually live right here in Marinwood, too. I've been here for uh, geez, probably going on about 11 years now and uh, 
uh, two young boys like the being here and love working here and working with all of you and we have an amazing staff and uh, I appreciate you coming aboard Michael uh, thank you Michael actually found us uh, before we even started advertising uh, the position he, uh, he sent me an email and uh, I immediately responded and here he is uh, to be clear Michael will join the commission officially uh, in January. So January 1 is when his term will start, but I invited him to participate in the meeting. Uh, he just can't vote on the one action item that we have here, which would be uh, last month's minutes. But otherwise, uh, please uh, participate away. Thanks. Okay, good deal. Um, next, we'd look for a public comment on non-agenda items. Searching for any hands raised, John. I don't see any hands raised. You have no public comment. Okay, uh, we'll move on to item number four. This is draft minutes of the October 26, 2021 uh, PNR Commission meeting. Uh, this is something we're looking to approve. Any comments on the draft minutes from commissioners? I guess it all looks good. Uh, I guess we now um, I seek a motion for approval. Do you have to do comment first or no, Eric? Which is the uh, you can do motions. Order. You just don't take a vote until you ask for okay. comment. Okay, great. I have so move. Uh, do I have a second? Second. And any public comment before we vote? No hands raised, John. All in favor? Okay, so it was a motion by Fine, second by Shawson, and uh, all approved. Um, moving on to item number five. This is the draft minutes of the November 9th, 2021 board meeting. Uh, this is for our review. Any uh, comments or questions from commissioners? Sorry, I'm getting a spam call. <laughs> um, hearing none, any uh, public comment on the uh, director's meeting? You have no public comment, John. All right. Um, I guess we'll move on to item number six. This is the uh, district manager's update on selected Park and Recreation Initiatives for our review. Uh, this is, I think Eric has a uh, turn out in the agenda on that. Yeah, so I uh, just, I, I typically we don't meet in December, um, mostly because it's like two days after Christmas and in between the holidays and everything there. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of leave you guys with a little bit of an update since we won't reconvene for another couple months on some of the larger initiatives uh, a little bit uh, more germane to this commission. Um, try to, I won't really go through everything word by word, but just giving you all a nice update on the uh, park maintenance facility there. I was actually down there in a meeting with the general contractor and the architect today. Um, they should actually be finishing up the roofing, hopefully by tomorrow, otherwise by Monday, but they've already, uh, it's already sealed. Um, so the roof is watertight, um, skylights have been put in, everything else, and then it'll just be the final top coat uh, application that will go on that. Um, they're already putting on the siding and the wrap on the exterior. They're running uh, all of the uh, electrical rough uh, and all the conduit is going through there, finishing up the plumbing and the mechanical rough. Um, and it's really starting to come together. I think by the time we meet again, this building will be very close to significantly completed. Um, so it's very good. They're running on schedule. Um, the contractor has been very good and very communicative to work with. Um, so there's that. Uh, any questions before I kind of move on on the park maintenance facility? Again, I just wanted to give you guys a little update, knowing that by the time we meet again, that we'll we'll be almost moving in. That'll be great. 
yeah, it's, if you haven't been by there lately, I encourage you to. Uh, if you want to coordinate times with me, I'm happy to walk you in uh, and show you where it's at. Uh, it's really coming together nicely. Uh, the local vegetation management projects, um, you know, this is all fuel reduction for fire prevention. If you've been anywhere near the uh, wildland urban interface along Idleberry, stretching all the way down past Queenstone to the uh, end of Peachstone, You've probably seen the crews out there. I've been out there a few times to see the work. Uh, I think personally, they're doing a very good job. They're keeping it very clean. They're paying a lot of attention to, you know, uh, making sure that any, uh, any wear and tear that they have on the landscape is being, you know, raked over and cleaned up afterward. Uh, and this is, you know, what we had always discussed, uh, kind of clearing out a lot of the dead and uh, dying trees, the debris, raising the canopies, uh, just trying to get it as fire protected as possible. All of this within that 100 foot uh, buffer zone from all of the residents. Um, we still have a few more days. I anticipate this project probably to go through the end of the month. Um, I'm planning on meeting up with them uh, with a few more days left on our contract just so we can look at all the spots if there's any areas they need to pay extra attention to where we want them to clean up a little bit tighter. Uh, they certainly can. So the company has been doing this. has been great to work with as well. Also very communicative. The county open space district has been good and granted us access on going through a piece of their property to, for an ease to get to where we're doing work on our property. Um, I imagine, I don't know who has seen it or what. I'm sure Ian has noticed it uh, and uh, hopefully everybody is feeling good about it. If there's any questions or comments or feedback, I'm happy to take it. Uh, like I said, I'll be meeting up with them again shortly. So, I was wondering if you um, partner with the county to like, just check on the, like, the equivalent area behind Lucas Valley Estates. Um, so the Lucas Valley Estates, that is, to your point, that's county-owned property. So that's not property that uh, we technically maintain. I do know that it is part of their larger project to go through there. The one thing about Lucas Valley Estates is uh, you don't have, a, uh, there's a couple spots, but you actually don't have, it's mostly grassland and hills. You don't have a lot of kind of forested areas that are in there. Uh, one of the other things, you know, one of the things that we took on last year was along that path that runs kind of behind Creekside Park from uh, Bridgegate through, and we tried to clear up that path and raise the canopy and pulled out a lot of invasive and uh, dead and overgrown brush through there. We're looking to do something similar probably in the early spring um, on Louise Court, where there's another asphalt pathway that way that actually runs over to uh, CSA 13, but that's our property where that pathway is. So we're looking at cleaning up that area as well. Um, and I know that through the Wildfire Prevention Authority, um, they're doing a lot of uh, a large project, you know, kind of stretching all the way from where CSA 13 and the county facilities go all the way out to the west. Uh, I'm not sure about goat grazing or anything in that area, but I can certainly find out for you, Michael. Um, again, those are, you know, that's county jurisdiction, so they're the ones putting in the plans, um, but it wouldn't be too hard for me to find out, uh, so I will see. But, you know, that creek area is one of the areas we're monitoring, um, and then we have just some little landlocked areas that we are uh, uh, taking a look at as well. Thank you. Um, and then I walked final, the, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Ian. I was going to say, Eric. I was going to say, I walked the Idleberry Trail. I guess, for lack of a better phrase, for lack yep. of a better name, um, uh, one night this week, and it it you really made a difference. Like along, you know, behind those houses, um, uh, it just a lot of that area was really overgrown, and now they've kind of limbed it up from the ground and created more of a canopy above, and it just. It looks a lot cleaner and I'm, you know, um, from all the things I've heard about fire mitigation, it seems like it, it, it likely would have made a difference. So anyway, that, that area looked nice. I appreciate that, Ian. Uh, let's hope that we never have to find out if it made a difference or not. Uh, but I, I agree. And one of the things I've been impressed with is 
if you are familiar with the area and you know how overgrown it is, then it's very obvious to tell that, wow, okay, there's been a lot of cleanup that's happened in here. If you don't know the area and you're walking through, they've done a really clean job. It, it does not, in my opinion, look like they've just kind of come through and just, you know, hacked away at things and started, I mean, they, it was very strategic. The gentleman who leads the crew actually has a background in fire. Um, so they're, they're doing this with a, with a purpose and also taking in a lot of respect for the open space and the natural environment is their goal in all of this too. So I, I hope you uh, agree because I, I think it just looks really clean. Um, and then the Marinwood Park Clay Structure Replacement Project, the survey is live. We have pushed it out to our staff. We've actually started getting pretty good feedback from them. Um, we decided not to blast and advertise this uh, until after Thanksgiving. So on Monday, we're going to start pushing it out with regular, um, regular announcements. We do have a big A-frame that we've been setting out by the park during the day so that we've gotten a little bit of feedback there, but we're going to laminate up some signs that we're going to attach right next to the entrances. A little QR code has been created. Um, I added the link in here, so if anybody wants to look at it, I, it is significantly the survey that we all discussed in the last meeting and, and uh, approved to move forward with. Uh, we did add, I took a little uh, executive liberty and did add one question regarding age of, uh, of youth that they typically bring there. We just did it kind of in some spans. It's just a little checkbox, so I think it moves quick. All in all, I think the entire survey is six questions, it takes maybe, two minutes to complete. Um, so I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not concerned about people getting halfway through and deciding that they just don't want to do it anymore. Um, and I think uh, we thought about leaving the A-frame out over the holiday weekend. Uh, and we still might be able to get some of these things laminated. I got to check in with Carolyn on her schedule tomorrow and then we can attach them to the fencing there. Cause I do think we might get people use it the playground over the holiday. Uh, but otherwise, the survey is up and we're going to start pushing it. And the plan is we'll let it run throughout all of December and well into January. Uh, and ideally at the January meeting, we can see what kind of results we're getting and uh, see what kind of analytics we can pull from those results. Um, as well as uh, the application has been submitted. Um, that's more of a formality. It's just basically filling out and signing off on some of the government forms that are included. Um, all of the civil work's been completed on it. So the project is moving good. Um, hopefully the community survey gives us some good feedback that uh, we can immediately take from there and start finalizing up a design and build RFP and pushing that out to all the playground, uh, play structure, uh, equipment manufacturers and, and that done. Um, but otherwise everything's right on schedule for it. So it looks good. I'm happy about it. Uh, any questions or thoughts on any of that? Eric, I'm happy to, if, if you want any help with the sort of um, a analytic, whatever, uh, you know, looking at the results before the next meeting, feel free to ping me. I don't need to be included in that. So if staff has it under control, that's great. But, um, you know, my, my volunteering to help with the survey included volunteering to help uh, take a look at the results. So if, if you want a commissioner help on that, feel free to reach out. We will gladly send them your way. <laughs> and uh, and with the, our account, I mean, we do have a, a paid account on SurveyMonkey. And so you can break it down for you. Um, admittedly, I'm not the most adept at using this. Robin and Carolyn uh, and even Luke have a, have a strong handle on it and have used it for other things. We are going to push it out via email, via all of our social media. So anybody who's you know gone to one of our camp programs in the past couple of years should, should get this via email. Um, you know, the more response we can get, the better. Uh, and like I said, a lot of our staff, we pushed it out to our staff and a lot of them have already jumped on it, uh, which is great. Um, some of them have even stopped by uh, during the holiday break because they're home from school or whatever the case may be uh, back home from college. So they were excited to hear about it too. So uh, yeah, I just want to fine tune a little bit of the intro that we want to push out like in the body of the email, explaining the project, the timing of the project, um, and and get it out there so it can go and people get excited about it. Hopefully, it's a, obviously it's not just to gain feedback, uh, but it's also to gain awareness. And I think it's going to be a nice awareness tool uh, that people understand. Hey, 
this is another initiative that we are taking on. Uh, I did include all of the play structures in the application. Um, so funds allowing, hopefully uh, we can look at the mini park, the top park over there uh, next to the middle school in Las Galinas as well. And they said that was fine because it's all in one parcel. Um, otherwise, the last little piece I have here is on the trail feasibility report. Um, the gentleman who we are working with, his name is Tim Best, uh, was able to come out last week and actually um, do a field visit. Uh, he is still thinking hopefully by early December, he'll have something for us depending on the timing on that. Uh, I know the board's very interested in that because it could also represent a, a large investment on our part, uh, uh, not just uh, from a financial, but from a, a human resource capacity as well. Um, but he did get out there. He did do the study. It is my understanding, I believe, um, that John Campo actually met him out there and they walked it together, uh, which is great too. So um, I haven't heard back from John on that. I know he's out of town this week and this just happened at the end of last week. So hopefully he can have some more feedback for me when he gets back. Uh, but that is moving forward. So we'll see uh, what the practicality uh, is of that trail and what his opinions are and what it would take to actually put something out there. Hey, Eric, can I ask you a quick question? Um, yes. Where is the, like, what street is that senior living facility being built on? I'm actually looking at a map right now. I'm just trying to get a sense of how long the trail is. So the senior living facility is going to be on its own private driveway at the end of Marinwood Drive, where Marinwood Market is. Okay. Um, if you go past the market, there's the uh, Miller Creek School Bus Yard is mm -hmm. all the way down there on the left, and across Marinwood is on the right. Uh, there's going to be a bridge going over the creek, and it's going to extend out there, and it's going to actually be kind of up above the CHP highway scales at the bottom of the hill there is a privately owned piece of real estate that they own. And then that actually backs up to CSD open space that was deeded to the district as part of the development plan for the senior facility, as well as the residential facilities that are being built kind of on the corner of Las Galinas and Lucas Valley Road behind Ellen Court there. Okay. And, uh, you know, I know you, I may have mentioned this in the past, but just are there any conversations going on around security on the trail, just given there's a, there's a good bit of small amount of crime in that area of the neighborhood and it is linking to kind of the derelict end of the Marinwood market where sometimes we have issues with homeless in that area um, and that type of thing. So this path will link that to the community center lands, playgrounds, water fountains, bathrooms, all that kind of stuff. So. You know, I think it's a great project. Obviously, we want to connect that senior living facility to our recreation department. I love that. Um, but it just, you know, also, I guess, coming from an urban environment in San Francisco and some of the things I've seen there, you know, I just wonder, are we having any thoughts, conversations about that? And, you know, I just, I'll just throw that out there a little bit. Um, it's just something that we should be aware of, right? Nevada, the city of Nevada is having a heck of a time right now um, with a campground next to the library that now there's a huge court battle and they can't they can't remove it and it's become you know endemic to the area so um i don't know it's just a thought as we we plan community news right yeah we haven't had any of those conversations i mean we don't necessarily provide or have security uh, or supervision for any of our trails that are on our open space uh, this trail, I, I want to say, is about 2,500 feet long. So uh, don't quote me on that. Maybe closer to 2,000 feet um, when we just kind of loose measured it. Because uh, it, where it'll connect from is right there across kind of from the mini park on the other side of the creek and run down that way. Uh, it will be a developed area. That senior center will get a lot of people back and forth, but I think it's valuable feedback, Anne, and I, I'm sure it's something that when it gets discussed at a board level, uh, uh, Lisa can certainly, or you can um, mention that that had come up as a concern from the commission of you know, that, those possibilities. Uh, the one thing I will say is based on the geography of where this is, um, how this trail is going to have to traverse and go up. I mean, this isn't a, a flat grade. This is not like the Panhandle Trail. It will be a tough trail for the seniors who actually live in that facility to be able to walk. Um, these are some of the concerns of just the construction of this trail, the, where the geography is. It's steep. Uh, it's going to, you know, kind of 
go up and go down. There's going to most likely have to be some bridges that would be put in. I, uh, I, so I guess my point being, I don't know how much that population would be using it, um, but I, I, I don't discount your point. I think you bring up a good point in terms of uh, it's just another access area. I mean, we've also had fires up on that hill and everything else. So, Yeah, I mean, a little bit of question of the value of the trail is that senior community can't access it because the, the townhomes there, they can pretty easily kind of come naturally out of that neighborhood and cross by the mini park and, and join into the open space that way too. So if this is a very expensive project and it can't be used by the senior center, then you know, just, I think that's something to think about too. I, I, I think you bring up a lot of good points. I, I certainly have, uh, I, I don't know if concerns are the right word, but I, I, I have some level of trepidation over this trail going in and I think it's a big, uh, it's a big project that is going to take a lot of work to do properly uh, because my other concern is putting in a trail that uh, is going to be laborious for maintenance. Uh, you know, that's just another resource that we don't have, which is why we're trying to look at how do you do this properly and make sure you build a, a trail that is up to trail standards, is built uh, to the highest of efficiencies and, and does not become a constant burden on maintenance. Any other questions? Okay, and then just for some show Eric, and tell, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, Eric, I know this is like beyond the scope of this meeting, but just what, since we're talking about it, do you, uh, do you have a sense of timing on the senior facility? Do you, um, I don't, um, they're still going through and in the planning stages. Uh, I, having gone through county planning and permitting and uh, building applications, I wouldn't even begin to Estimate it other than to tell you longer than you think. Uh, you know, yeah. there, there's okay. still a Got ways it. out. Um, this whole thing, I mean, it's a private project, but they, once their plans get done, uh, you know, from a planning stage, then they got to get into building uh, drawings and permits. I mean, this is, they're still a few years out minimum. Uh, any other questions? I did try to give you guys some show and tell uh, just on the bait maintenance facility. These are some pictures that were actually included in the last board meeting packet. Uh, and again, I invite uh, if anybody wants to coordinate with me, I'm happy to walk you down there and kind of give you a firsthand look. It's, it's fun watching it come together. Um, and over the next several weeks, it's really going to start to shape up and become a, a, a finished building. So uh, anytime, anybody's welcome. Okay, um, if there are no other comments on the uh, update on the initiatives, I would ask for public comment. I am looking for any public comment on this and you do not have any public comment, John. All right, then we will um, move on to uh, item number seven. This is the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. Uh, hopefully you've had the opportunity uh, to view Luke's report from the uh, board meeting on uh, the 9th if uh, and then and then review what is uh, included in our agenda uh, any questions I guess we would have to refer or comments we could refer to Eric yeah I do hope that uh that's why I sent the YouTube link and tried to give you the minute mark because uh, Luke did give a good presentation and uh, description and understanding of all of this at the board meeting. I apologize. He can't be here today. He is out of the state uh, with his family for the holiday. So, uh, while he did offer to chime into this meeting, I said, Luke, take your vacation. <laughs> it, it sounds like that fall art show uh, came off real well. Yeah, yeah, it really did. It was well attended. I think people were excited to get to get out of the house and do things that uh, didn't involve looking at a screen, but actually looking at three dimensional items that interact with other people. So that went well. I know that they're excited to, for the spring art show. Uh, I will say, I think the art shows will, you know, there's some setup work and things that go involved and it's a weekend event. Uh, they're nice events and I think the community likes them. People appreciate being able to have a little art show in the neighborhood. Um, and it's interesting who 
who comes by, you know, the, and you, it's, I think it just, it brings a different clientele and audience into the community center in the Marin Wood than we would normally get for the types of events we normally do. Hats off uh, really to Luke and Carolyn and Robin and JP and then Susan Press, who is, uh, you know, was our longtime preschool director, but is uh, heavily involved in the artist community, it really takes a lot of time to put this together as well. So we, we certainly appreciate And then that uh, Jingle Bell Jazz looks interesting. Are we yeah, that should be rolling? fun. That should be fun. They're doing a, a new mix on uh, on our traditional Christmas celebration, and most of it will be outdoors, so fingers crossed for good weather. Um, we will have uh, – Santa will be in town, so there will be an opportunity for pictures with that and uh, – you know, I guess that tablet and other art type activities that the kids can either take home or uh, possibly have some tables set up out there. And so that's what they've been working on. Um, they're obviously already talking about summertime, uh, looking at those types of things. The parks department doesn't get to rest too much. I mean, this might be a little bit of a slow time, but I don't think we ever really have a slow time. They're constantly busy making sure that we have things going. So. Uh, I encourage you to come down, uh, hang out, bring the family, bring the kids, uh, listen to some live music, and uh, enjoy. Anything else from commissioners? I just wanted to say nice job on the, the financials for the recreation programs. This was a tricky year because everything's really different. And just, you know, reading through that report really quickly here, I see, you know, the numbers looking similar to what they did two years ago. So kudos, uh, Eric, to you and team um, for, for running things well financially. That's great. Yeah, well, that's kind of you to say. I, I, I pass a lot of that credit on, if not all of that credit. I mean, Luke and Robin and their team, they do a really good job. This is Luke's idea to, better than just this year to last year, to run a multi-year comparison. So mm -hmm. you can see here's our last, you know, big regular year for this, which was very much uh, uh, fly by the seat of our pants, real scaled back, uh, trying to figure out the COVID world to this summer that we just did, which was a little bit more. Uh, I don't, it, it's going to be weird when we get back to being able to just run normal operations again. Uh, so I'm sure that they are looking forward to it, but they've, They've really done a good job staying on top of the guidelines and the recommendations of public health, accommodating as many families as possible, trying to keep prices as reasonable as possible. Uh, and a lot of it, you know, just goes to show there's so, such variable costs involved in our camps that even though the revenue is significantly down, these guys are very good at making sure that uh, they maintain expenditures as well. So, and, and keep those at a relative level. Um, so again, I just, uh, I, I pass on all of that credit. Uh, you know, Rob, Robin does a great job with the camps. Luke does a great job overseeing everything. And uh, together we all kind of work on and put together the budget, and make sure we stay within the financials and, uh, uh, and, and keep the program viable. Any other questions or comments? Um, hearing none, I would ask for any then uh, public comment on the uh, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. I don't see any public comment on there, John. Okay. Um, well, gee, we're going to move up to item number eight. This is uh, any items of interest for future agenda items? I will say for the January meeting, that is typically when uh, the commission discusses and appoints a chair and a vice chair. Uh, the other thing I will note too is that at the December board meeting is when, uh, uh, I'm sorry, at the January board meeting is when the board will re-examine uh, who the liaisons are. 
So there's a very uh, decent chance this might be Lisa's last meeting uh, here as the board liaison with the commission. So thank you to her for uh, taking a Tuesday night uh, every month to, to join and participate and represent the board and represent the commission back to the board. Um, so that will be on the January agenda. And one of the things that um, Director Chris Case had asked about was he was looking for some information um, regarding just kind of the current status of the fireman's picnic area over there on the panhandle path. So Luke is gonna work on kind of trying to put together a presentation of that. So that might very well come to the commission for the commission's discussion as well. I'm gonna to talk to uh, Director Case and uh, just kind of clarify and see if maybe he wants us to kind of run that through and fine tune it and polish it up with any commission feedback before we bring it to the board. Um, it might've been a little bit more of a personal interest, but it's, it's a great area. It does get utilized. Um, it's kind of off the radar um, for those who are kind of in the know for that area. So that, that is coming to at some point that may very well come up here. Yeah, that uh, jogs my memory. I wanted to mention to you, the drinking fountain is broken in the fireman's area. Is and it that, broken or just not on? Uh, it just doesn't, I don't know. I tried to turn it and no water came out. Okay. Um, th that could very well be that they just have it off for the season. I'll, I'll follow up. Yeah, and then the, you uh, know, I don't the, know. The one in the main playground, I think, if you know, is also not working properly. So I just mentioned it. The kids really do use those fountains and they're thirsty all year round. Uh, I know it's particularly more important when it's hot, but a lot of the kids are out on bikes and they're running around and they don't, they don't have water bottles with them. So it'd be great if we could get those working. Yep. I, I don't know the details, but I can find out. Uh, they're, they might be off for a reason. They might've been doing some maintenance on the water lines. I don't know. Okay. Anybody got anything else? Well, Lisa, we want to thank you for spending your last year of Tuesday nights with us. Oh, thank you. It's certainly been a pleasure. Well, it's I been a great definition. So um, definitely, uh, you, you haven't seen the last of me. <laughs> 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 I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I, yeah, it's um, it's been really awesome getting to know all of you and getting to. Um, just become just just get a different a lens and 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 more just more information about what's what's going on in um in our parks and you know it is such an important part of my life and my family's life so i thank you all for the work that you're doing good deal well if there's nothing else i guess we're 40 minutes, we're rocking through it here tonight. I guess I'd seek a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. So moved. I second. All right, all in favor. All right, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah, have a nice holiday, everybody. Uh, travel safe if you are traveling and uh, hug your loved ones. All right. Good night. night. Thank you, everybody. Welcome again, Michael. Thanks. Glad to be here. That's a good, uh, good intro. <laughs> nice and easy. Yeah. Yeah, that'll yeah. change. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Take care, you guys. Good night. Bye now.